Hi everyone. This video shows how you can generate efficient HDL code from your state flow charts. To start off, use the SF new command to create an empty state flow chart called traffic light. You can then configure the model to use recommended settings for HDL code generation using the HDL setup command. Now let us take a look at the chart properties by navigating to modeling and then clicking on chart properties. By default, SFNU creates a classic chart with MATLAB set as the action language. For our current design, we will change the chart type to a mood chart. We recommend keeping MATLAB as the action language. It is also recommended to use HDL5 math for HDL code generation. For our traffic light system, we have created the following chart with three states and used absolute time temporal logic to control their transitions. The next step is to enable active state monitoring in the chart properties. Once enabled, Stateflow creates a port that outputs the current state of the chart as an enumeration. Now let us save the model and add HDL Coder Toolstrip to the model through the app section. To generate HDL code from the chart, it is critical that we encapsulate the chart inside a subsystem. We can then connect the output of the subsystem to a scope block to observe the state transitions if interested. Once the subsystem is created around the chart, we unpin the code for text in the tool strip and pin the newly created subsystem. We run the model once to verify that the behavioral simulation is correct. It is highly recommended to run the design through HDL Code Advisor to ensure that the design does not violate any of the HDL Coder guidelines. After running all the selected checks, we can see that our design passed without any issues. Let us now generate code from our design by launching the Workflow Advisor, right-clicking on Step 3.2 and choosing Run to Selected Task. We will see that a package file is generated that contains the enumerations for all the states in the chart. Also note that a fourth state enumeration none is generated automatically. This value can be used by other blocks in the design to check if this chart is in a valid state or not. Now let us take a look at the VHL code generated from the chart itself. We can see that the state of the chart is output as chart mode. Scrolling down, we find that the temporal logic is implemented as a 9-bit counter with corresponding comparison logic for all the transitions. The width of the absolute time temporal logic counter is dependent on the dynamic range of values that it needs to simulate. In this case, the maximum count value is 90 seconds and the fixed step size is 0.2 seconds. Therefore, the dynamic range is 0 to 180, which is an 8-bit value. The 9th bit is needed to perform additions and comparisons. Changing the fixed step size to 1 second reduces the dynamic range to 90. As we regenerate the VHDL code from the updated model, we will see that the counter is now 7 bit wide. For a step size agnostic code, you should use tick instead of absolute time units like second in the temporal logic. Now this example can be made a little complex by adding an additional requirement that we want to know how many times the chart hits the red state during a simulation. We can know this easily by introducing a local variable in the chart called red hit count and an output variable called out red hit count. Next, we enter the counter logic in the red state. We need to set the data types of these variables and their initial values correctly at this point. Let us set the data type to be in32 with an initial value of in32 0 and in32 1 for out red head count and red head count respectively. It is important to explicitly typecast all constant literals used inside state flow charts for any logical arithmetic or initialization operations. This is used by HDL coder in inferring the data type during 
the code generation process. Let us now route the newly created output to the output of the top level module so it gets reflected in the generated HDL code and also connected to the scope blocks so that we can observe the output values. Upon simulation of the model, we note that the output value does not change when the state of the chart is not read. This is because we have deselected the state flow chart option initialize output every time chart wakes up. This allows the output to hold the value assigned in a previous state in case it is not updated in the current state. Checking this option changes the simulation behavior completely by resetting the output to its initial value, which in this case is zero, when the current state does not assign a value to the output. Needless to say, the generated code varies significantly between checking and unchecking of this option. Let us compare the code generated from the two scenarios. On the left hand side, we have code generated with the option unchecked and on the right hand side, we have code generated with the option checked. As you can see, when we uncheck the option, we generate extra registers to store the latest value of the output. These registers are not needed when the option is checked and is replaced by default constant assignments in the output process. These extra registers do translate to additional resource utilization in the synthesized design. Therefore, as hardware designers, it is recommended to pay close attention to the settings that may or may not be selected in the chart properties or the configuration parameters of the model. These options can affect not only simulation but also the hardware utilization on chip. In summary, through this video, you learned how to create state flow charts, configure them for HDL code generation, verify your designs using HDL code advisor, and gain an understanding of how various properties of the chart and model settings can affect the generated code. Thank you for watching.